Good day, everybody. We're coming to you live from Innovate for Climate here in Frankfurt. It's a discussion where we're, leaders are coming together to drive innovation in finance, technology, policy, business, and investments. So it's my great pleasure to be having an online discussion now with uh, Mr. Viva Dreyer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Mr. Dreyer is the chairman of the managing board of, of Rabo Bank. Um, and you're spreading a message on how financial institutions can be part of this great transition to a low carbon resilient future. So maybe just to get us going, what is the role of the banking world and the banking institutions in helping accelerate climate action? Well, I think the, uh, thank you for, uh, for this opportunity and thank you also for the question. I think the, the banking sector is the pivot, the enabler of investments that are needed for climate action. And so I think the role is crucial. Um, what we have to find ways, though, is to make that banking sector active to create those investments. And right now, there's still a lot to be done. Absolutely. But Rabo Bank is, is one of the flagship institutions that is showing um, a lot of progress in using the Sustainable Development Goals as a guiding principle, yes. but really also leveraging and, and making a lot of finance available for climate solutions, in particular in the food and agriculture industry. Yes. So maybe you could just explain a little bit the history of the Rabobank, how, how you got involved in, in the food and agricultural yes. industry, and, and how that guides your current investment portfolio, your current uh, leveraging, and, and your current influence. Yeah. So Rabobank uh, started about uh, 120 years ago as a cooperative in the agricultural sector in the Netherlands. Mm. And what it did is combined resources from, let's say, richer farmers to invest in poorer farmers so that they both could go up in the welfare development. And that, that philosophy of bringing together money from wealthier parts of the society to invest it into the parts where it's still needed mm. is still applicable today and also in the area of shifting to a more productive food uh, sector. We are now one of the biggest banks in the world of food. Mm. We're present in all the continents of the world and we're present in all parts of the food supply chain. So what we thought about doing with our mission to help grow a better world is how can we help the shift to a more sustainable farming practices in, for example, Africa, South America. And to that end, what we've done, and that's why we're here at this conference too, is we've linked up with the United Nations environment. And we've created a fund of about a billion US dollars whereby we combine the cooperative banking investment money with extra incentives from the United Nations Environment Program to help farmers shift their practice. And in essence, we're doing right now around the climate question that what created Rabobank 120 years ago as a cooperative bank. And that is, I think it gives a good feel, but it also is very close to what we are and where we come from. Yeah. And in, in, in many ways, it, it is so crucial. So we're already seeing the impacts of climate change. Um, it is. Farmers are amongst the most vulnerable, especially in developing countries where uh, they are reliant on, on, on shifting rainfall patterns. So being able to provide that, up uh, that, that financial uh, support, um, how do you deal with the impacts that the farmers are already seeing? And does that become risky business for you? Yeah. So the, I think in the, in the challenge we have with climate is we need to make a more sustainable food supply to the world. About 30% of the CO2 emissions comes from the food sector. Agriculture is the biggest ingredient. At the heart of that are farmers, individual farmers, and in particular smallholder farmers in, for example, Africa or Indonesia or South America. And the question is how can you get those small, the really small farmers that are just about making up for the need of their own food and sell some food on the local markets, how can you help them make the shift to a more climate sustainable uh, practice? And they are obviously the most vulnerable because they, they get to get the most swings in prices, they have more seasonal effects. So one of the things we need to do is to help them form cooperatives again so that they can absorb some of those shocks, mm -hmm. so that they can invest in a tractor, so that they can start to get access to the global agricultural markets. In other words, that you connect the smallholder farmer to the global food markets so that they can start to adopt the real practices that are needed. And that role, that, that bridging role is, I think, what the food system agriculture needs right now. And that's why we are so passionate about making that happen. Mm. So it's, it's really uh, creating cooperatives 
allowing for the finance to uh, become a buffer within the communities and, and enabling them to acquire the technology and the resources exactly. to, to enhance their resilience at the end of the day. That is a, and, and in essence, in a funny way, that's exactly what happened 120 years ago in the Netherlands when, when really a, a subsistent farming was connected to more established farming and together they could dry up. And so I think we're seeing a new, a new age right now where that connection of not only finance of local farmers, but also the private sector that buys these goods, that brings them to Europe, North, North America, Asia, the end markets, they are now really connected. And this is a new opportunity, I think this is a new chance for the world to connect those big players to the very small and start to create incentives so that they really change to more sust sustainable practices. Absolutely. In Africa, for example. Absolutely, and, and looking ahead a little bit, um, financing the grand transition to a low carbon resilient future will be a, a key requirement. And, and the role of banks is obviously the, the major player there. Yeah. So, so what is your guiding principle? What is your plan as, as you look ahead at the next uh, 10 to 15 years? And how do you use uh, SDGs as well as climate action to, to um, frame that uh, strategy, that investment yeah. Yeah. Uh, framework? I think for the coming uh, years, and Paris has been a great step in on the climate front, but for the coming years, the agenda for what we need to do for the world, with the world, is embedded in the Sustainable Development Goals. So anybody who is unclear about what the world needs, read the Sustainable Development Goals, because they describe what we collectively need to do about climate, about education, about welfare, about social access to, to stable economic livelihoods, about education, rights of women, it's the whole agenda for the world. Mm -hmm. And so we as a, as a cooperative bank have said, if there's anything that is the compass for the world and we want to align our attention, our focus and our resources to what that takes. Mm -hmm. We're particularly good in food, we'll do a lot there. I think what needs to happen now is that the, part, the private sector needs to connect to the public sector, needs to connect to, in this case, smallholder farmers to get that change going. It's an exciting time to be able to do that, but there is still also many hurdles still to overcome. Mm -hmm. And what are the hurdles? What are the hurdles? Hurdles are, for example, that smaller farmers don't have immediate clarity of ownership rights. There is no legal framework in which they, they know that if they take a step on day one, on day 10 or year 10, they can again rely on the results. Mm -hmm. Providing stability is an important factor. In other words, it is still very complex to make that shift happen, but the global sustainable development goals are ultimately the strategy for the world and you can copy your strategy as a private player to that agenda for the world. And, and does that also uh, advise the kind of business ventures that you then uh, uh, end up financing? So do you it have does. a sustainable development criterion yes. as well as a low carbon decarbonization uh, criterion that defines? Yeah. yeah, so we've been for now almost 10 years experimenting with and documenting for every of our clients in the food chain around the world what are your practices and so we now have a database a record where we can see for those who apply those practices more rigorously how do they fare over time and we use that also to have a dialogue with our clients to say we think you should actually step up in this area to adhere to those standards that are embedded in the sustainable development goals i think that's the way forward that's when you look at a bank, as a bank to finance an entrepreneur, a, a company, you look at on the one hand on the business case, the financial business case, but you also look at the SDG business case. They are frankly connected. Right? Companies that do well in the SDGs tend to do well in the long run, particularly now on the, on the let's say, the economic side. They are connected, but you need to look particularly on how well are companies performing on adhering to the SDGs. If you do that, you can finance them better, you can give them more guarantees and they will do better and that's good for a cooperative bank that has a long term in mind. Mm. So, so what's your message for, for the financial world over the next couple of years? How, how, how would you like to see it evolve to really integrate sustainability and really integrate the, the need for decarbonization? Yeah, I think we should use that, that SDG test, SDG basis, SDG rating as integral part of finance and that's the way we need to go but then we also need to turn around and say can we report explain give transparency to the world about how we as a financial sector act mm. and what we have done to give our share to the SDG, to achieving the sdgs 
that reporting, that transparency, that clarity is something that the financial sector also needs to do. And then it needs to link up, link up with private sector producers, consumer uh, distributing companies, retailers, the large wholesale companies, link up with the private sector to collectively form alliances so that we can help create the environment in which the farmers can make the change happen. I think that notion of partnering and linking up is something that is really needed in this era. I see it here in this conference. I was on stage just now with the likes of Olam and, uh, and, and Barry Callebaut, companies that are big in chocolate, the chocolate value chain. You see the connection between finance, the private sector that produces chocolate, and the agricultural sector and the public sector. You see it happening. That is the ingredient for the next era in achieving the sustainable development goals of the world. And, and this is actually such an exciting time where the financial industries, um, as well as the technology, and as well as the policy frameworks are all realigning themselves to integrate sustainability, to uh, push for decarbonization and building resilience. Indeed. So maybe in, in, in closing, uh, a message for the younger audience since we're live on Facebook. Yeah. How can they be a part of this uh, grand transition? How, how can you motivate them to be part of sustainable finance, to be part of uh, ensuring that we build a sustainable, low yeah. carbon, resilient future? Yeah. So one of the thoughts I, I, I frequently have is there's a, among the younger generation, there's frequently the thought that they should not link up with big companies to, because of the, their hunger to achieve the SDGs. I think they're, we're moving into an era where the opposite is true. They should join these big co corporates and drive them, force them, incentivize them, tease them to be more outspoken about the SDGs and get them to act on them. We do it and we believe that our people, people work with, with us, have this extra motivation and we welcome those kinds of talents to join them. I think the talent should now say, we are going to change those large corporates. And with that, uh, Mr. Dreyer, thank you so very much for thank being you. with us. We've been thank live on, on Connect for Climate's Facebook page. Join us with the hashtag Innovate for Climate and keep on uh, enjoying this discussion around innovation and finance, technology, policy, business and investments. Thank, thank you so you very much. much. Thank you. Appreciate it.